Yeah. Welcome to our services tonight. Just have a few announcements. Uh, Joyce Swangle's son-in-law, Everett Sedell, um, had some surgery done, I think it was yesterday. Uh, we need to pray for good test results. Also, uh, Carrie Burke is asking for prayers for her, her and her boys are preparing to move uh, this fall to the state of Washington. And so she's asking for prayers for them for their transition move. Uh, that's all the announcements that I have right now. And welcome people that are online live streaming. Uh, we're going to be studying tonight, John chapter 14. And would you go with me to God in prayer? Holy Father, we thank you for this time that we can assemble in your name. We thank you, Father, for your word, your word which is true. And we know, Father, that many people wrote the Bible and yet it, it all connects and uh, your spirit led those writers. We thank you, Father, for the book of John that we can uh, study with others, that we can lead them to a knowledge of your son and our savior, Jesus. Father, we ask that you be with us tonight as we study chapter 14 in John and just help us to uh, have wisdom, help us to learn, help us to understand your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before we get started tonight, I'd like for you to think back to your childhood and remember the house that you lived in. How many rooms did you have in that house? And I'll give you just a little bit of time to think about the different rooms that you grew up in when you were a child. <clears throat> so how many of you had more than six rooms? Okay. More than 10 rooms? Eight? Nine, at eight. Uh, I can remember back in my childhood, I had, we had 10 rooms in our big house, but we had a big family. We had, the, I had uh, five brothers and a sister. I'm sorry. Um, so there were seven of us kids and my mom and dad, so that made nine of us in, in one house with about 13 rooms. We're going to talk about rooms tonight, and <clears throat> John chapter 14 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. So we see in these first four verses or so here that uh, he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Fear not. You know, this time of COVID, we have a lot of people that have fear. And, you know, we need to not fear um, because we have Christ with us. 
Believe in God, believe also in me, says Jesus. He says, in my Father's house are many rooms. So that's a statement. You know, we don't know how many rooms is in God's house. But the, the question is, if that weren't true, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? So that's a question. And he says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me so that you will be where I am. You know, that's going to be great to be with Jesus, to be where Jesus is. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? So Jesus had said, uh, you know the way, you know uh, the way how to get to where I'm going. And Thomas says, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know the way. Um, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? So Jesus answers, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. <clears throat> So verse 4 is a segue to the next teaching. You know the way and the, the place where I am going. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? In verse 6, Jesus answers, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, we can't go get to the Father, we can't get to God the Father through Jay Keller or Keith Kern, you know, or Rudy Hemister. <coughs> Excuse me. We can only get to God the Father through Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And verse 4, is, like verse 7, as it segues into the next teaching, verse 7 says, If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip says, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Just show us God. Let's see what God looks like. <coughs> Just going to step down here and turn around and look at this. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. 
or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. <clears throat> so anyone who had seen Jesus, Jesus says, had seen the Father. He says, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. And Jesus does not speak on his own, by his own authority. Everything that Jesus spoke was from God the Father. <clears throat> Verse 11 says, Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. In Matthew chapter 11, uh, verses 2 through 6, when John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. <clears throat> Another time, Jesus was talking uh, to Nicodemus. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. The signs that Jesus was doing proved that God was with him. <clears throat> Verse 12, Verily, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. The apostles and other disciples were given the ability to, to perform signs and wonders. In Mark chapter 6, verses 6 through 13, Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever, <clears throat> whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. This is Luke chapter 10, verses 16 through 20. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us 
in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. <clears throat> The disciples and the apostles were given power to do signs. Some things that we are able to do like Jesus. We can preach the word. We can instruct. We can teach. We can baptize. And you know that's one thing Jesus didn't do. Jesus didn't do bab baptism. He had his disciples were the ones that baptized people. Uh, this is found in John chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. The greatest miracle that we can perform is leading a person from eternal death to eternal life through faith and obedience in Christ Jesus. You know, I had a lot of struggle with trying to figure out, you know, what can we do that Jesus didn't do? And, uh, or... And Jesus, a lot of Jesus' miracles were physical. Like he walked on water, he healed people from being blind, or he healed the sick, he raised people from the dead. Those are all physical things. But you know, we can do, like Jesus says, even greater things than Jesus did. Maybe not physically, but spiritually. We can bring a person through teaching about Jesus from e eternal death to eternal life with God's word and Jesus' help in our lives. Amen? <clears throat> the disciples and apostles were given power to do signs. Some, okay, I guess I already said this one. Okay, Mark 16, 16 through 20. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. So Jesus gave special uh, powers, you might say, the special um, things that accompanied their, uh, their speech, that accompanied their, um, the good news, that Jesus uh, died, Jesus was buried, Jesus rose again, that's the, the gospel in as first Corinthians chapter thirteen says or fifteen um, <clears throat> and the reason that the the apostles were given these special uh, powers to to work miracles was 
what he says down here. It was to confirm the word that they preach. They preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. We can read all in the book of Acts all the different miracles that the the apostles um, did when they were speaking and and preaching uh, to the people. The whole book of Acts is full of of Paul and Peter healing people. <clears throat> John 14, 13 through 14, New International Version. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. James 4, 2 through 3. I think there's some other scriptures that we need to uh, add to John chapter 14. Um which maybe puts, puts it in a little bit more perspective. You desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So, depending on what we're asking, our attitude and our motives of what we're asking for, um, you know, we can ask God, God, will you give me a million dollars? Is he going to answer that prayer? Um, You know, you want to, you ask with wrong motives that you may spend it on, on your pleasures. <clears throat> Here's another one, 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 through 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have, what we ask of him. You know, Jesus in the garden was praying to the Father. If it be possible, let this cup pass. And he didn't just pray this one time or two times. He, he prayed this prayer three times. Let this cup pass from me. But. But. Not my will be done, but thy will be done. John fourteen fifteen. <clears throat> if you love me, keep my commands. Here's a, a bunch of other scriptures that really say the same thing. Um, John 14, verse 21 and 23. John 15 and verse 10. John 15, verse 17, 2 John, verse 6 says, And this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. You know, we have so many verses in the Bible that speak about love. And the, uh, our attitude uh, should be that of love. And we're commanded by Jesus to walk in love. <clears throat> and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, and he lives with you and will be in you. 
I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoke, all this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. The role of the Spirit. The Greek word uh, parakletos means one called alongside to help, comforter, advocate, intercessor. Para means beside or alongside. I used to be a paramedic. I was beside a medic. So we had we had doctors that would um, be in charge of paramedics, and so we would kind of be alongside, you might say, a doctor. Um, but paraclete or paracletus, one called alongside to help, comforter, advocate, intercessor, to help you and be with you forever. Verse 26 says, The Holy Spirit will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I said to you. Here are some other scriptures that uh, pertain, pertain to this. John 14, 26, John 7 and verse 39, and Romans chapter 8, verse 26. John 14, 27 through 31, our closing remarks. He says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. He says, come now, let us leave. <clears throat> Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I had, you might say, an experience once of the greatest peace um, from God. And it was at my wife's uh, first wife's funeral uh, and it it was at the viewing and Carol had given me uh, 
um, scripture, um, number six, 24 through 26, the priestly blessing. And I gave that blessing to everyone that came to comfort me. And yet I had the peace. I think the past is understanding that I was able to bless everyone that came in uh, to view Carol. Um, and she had given me that scripture when we were dating before we were even married. But I just, I had a peace and it's hard to describe, but uh, it was the peace that passes understanding. So let not your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. I think that is relevant to us today about the COVID. I don't think we, we don't need to be afraid of COVID. Um, you know, I've told people, well, I've lived my life. Um, you know, if God wants to take me, he, let him take me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'll, I'll go to heaven. Uh, I'm not, I'm not afraid of, of COVID. Um, I think we need to trust. We need to trust in God. We need to not be afraid. You know, many times Jesus told his disciples, don't be afraid. You know, they were uh, in the boat and it was, they saw Jesus walking and they thought maybe it was, it was a ghost. And he, fear not, you know, it's, it's me. Um, don't be afraid. He says the devil is coming. The prince of this world, the devil, is coming, but he has no hold over me. You know, when we are in Christ, the devil goes around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. But in Christ, the devil has no hold over us. We don't need to be fearing, fearful of the devil. If we have Jesus in our lives. He comes so that the world may learn. That I love the father. And do exactly. What my father commanded me. You know when. Jesus was on the cross. The, the last words that Jesus said. It is finished. What was finished. It was everything that God the Father had told Jesus to do. There were several times when, when people wanted to stone Jesus, to kill Jesus, and it wasn't his time yet. And he was able just to walk through the crowd. Um, he was able, you know, it wasn't his time because he hadn't completed what his father had commanded him to do. I think it's very um, special that, you know, so many times Jesus says, the words that I'm speaking to you are not my words. These words that I'm speaking to you are from God the Father. And I think John chapter 14 just uh, says that over and over and over again that you know Jesus' words are not his words they're God the Father's words and he did exactly what God the Father commanded him to do Jesus was obedient even to death on the cross. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8. 
<clears throat> so that, that's all that I have for you tonight. I appreciate everyone being here and everyone online. Um, would you go with me to God in prayer? Holy Father, we thank you that we can study your word. We pray, Father, that you will help us to learn. Uh, give us wisdom, Father, to understand uh, some of the things that are hard to understand. And we know, Father, that we can't understand everything uh, perfectly. That one day when we are with you and... Uh, we will understand. I have a greater understanding. Father, we thank you for the book of John. Uh, thank you for Jesus' life. Thank you for Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection on the third day. Father, that fulfilled scriptures that had been written about him and we thank you father that um, even though we don't can and can't do the, some of the the physical things that jesus did we can even do greater things than jesus we can teach like he did but we can bring a person spiritually from spiritual death the spiritual life. Only through Jesus' blood and, and being baptized into Christ, putting on Christ, clothing ourselves with Christ. Father, we, we pray that you increase our faith. <coughs> Just help us, Father, to, to lean on you. Help us to trust you more. Father, we thank you for the, the spirit that we received when we were baptized into Christ. As Acts chapter 238 states. Uh, when we repent and are baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for the spirit of truth that dwells within us. We thank you, Father, that he uh, reminds us of scriptures that we have studied, that we have read in the past and brings about in our memory. Uh, we thank you, Father, for the Spirit and Jesus being our intercessors, that they intercede for us are when we can't put things to, to words and can't express ourselves uh, that they can express those things to you. We thank you, Father, for that. Father, we, we ask that you uh, help us to grow Help us to grow numerically here at the church and help us to grow spiritually, Father. Just thank you for, for Jesus, for him being obedient, Father, to you in everything and, and uh, the words that he, he spoke were words from you. He was obedient in fulfilling what you sent him to do. You sent him to die on the cross. Father, we, we just pray that you uh, be with us this, this coming week. Help us, Father, in our lives to, to show forth Christ and to share Christ. My prayer in Jesus' name, amen.